America's presidents have always brought something unique to the White House. From revolutionaries to businessmen to statesmen, their common thread has been clear, a commitment to the founding principles that make America great. Until recently, there was something else every president since World War II had in common. They all saw Adolf Hitler for the genocidal monster he was. All of them except one, Donald Trump. Most importantly, Trump is a threat to this nation. The dehumanizing rhetoric of Adolf Hitler. Donald Trump's language mirrors this directly. Well, Hitler was duly elected. Let's deal with Hitler, okay? I, I don't think it's hyperbolic to say that. I mean, that is Mussolini Hitler-like language. He is a threat, period, point blank. It is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous that Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler on June 27th, Trump and Biden had their first 2024 presidential debate, which ended disastrously for the Democratic Party. America and the world could not deny the level of senility displayed by the current sitting president. I have never, yeah. ever had what happened on this thing tonight happen in the middle of a debate. I'm quite eligible for what I've been able to do with the, uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, unmitigated disaster for President Biden? Dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look. From the second he walked out to the closing statement. Uh, I really don't know what he said. I don't think he knows what he said either. Trump just survived an assassination attempt at his rally in Pennsylvania. A special day, Sunday, the day after President Trump was shot. You say uh, Nazi enough times, to enough people, someone's going to actually have the guts to do it. The rhetoric, the hate, the depiction of him as a Nazi and a dictator is repulsive. Hello, Americans. I want to speak to you tonight about the need for us to lower the temperature in our politics. Yesterday's shooting at Donald Trump's rally in Pennsylvania calls on all of us to take a step back. You called your opponent an existential threat. Uh, on a call a week ago, you said it's time to put Trump in the bullseye. It was a, it was a mistake to use the word. I didn't, I didn't say crosshairs. I meant bullseye. I meant focus on him. How do you talk about the threat to democracy, which is real, when a president says things like he says? Certain dates echo throughout history, including dates that instantly remind all who have lived through them where they were and what they were doing when our democracy came under assault. December 7th, 1941, September 11th, 2001, and January 6th, 2021. You swore an oath to, quote, preserve, protect, and defend, unquote, the Constitution. What do you say to voters who believe that you violated that oath through your actions and inaction on January 6th? I said peacefully and patriotically. I know that everyone here will soon be marching over to the Capitol building to peacefully and patriotically make your voices heard. And Nancy Pelosi, if you just watched the news from two days ago, on tape to her daughter, she's saying, oh, no, it's my responsibility. I was responsible for this. We have responsibility, Terry. We did not have any accountability for what was going on there, and we should have. We have totally failed. We have to take some responsibility for not giving this party accountable. Because I offered her 10,000 soldiers or National Guard, and she turned them down. And the mayor of, in writing, by the way, the mayor in writing turned it down, the mayor of, of D.C., they turned it down. You have politicians every night comparing it to Pearl Harbor, 9-11. That was just D.C. And D.C., if you live there, you're like, I am under siege. I see National Guard men around here, the local media every day. You can't have a fair trial. This is Alexandra Pelosi, Nancy Pelosi's daughter, admitting that D.C. is too biased to hold fair trials and scoffing at the idea of a January 6th insurrection. If there was an insurrection, there was no plan. Exactly. If there was an insurrection, it's the sorriest insurrection in, in the, the worst 20th, 21st century ever. No guns, 
A no guy, plan. A guy, people smoking, taking selfies. A guy smoking pot. Uh, what, what, what did he do? Okay, what did he do? He went. He just he walked in with the Trump flag in the sand. That's right. The media makes you into a monster. I think time is going to yeah, remember yeah. January 6th differently. The narratives are shifting as independent journalists and podcasters rise in numbers and popularity. They're opening the door for him. Wild. That's not what I thought it was. One thing about the Charlottesville that 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 I ranted about. Yes. And I was wrong about the both sides thing. You had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? When you see the full quote, yeah, yeah, it, that wasn't what, what he said. The people saying that Trump is waging war on our democracy are also the ones who stood idly by when Hillary Clinton stole the 2016 primary from Bernie Sanders. If you want to run for president, you've got to make your case to voters. Within a month of the debate, Joe Biden announces he is no longer running for re-election and eventually endorses Vice President Kamala Harris. The idea of selecting the Democrat Party's nominee because George Soros and Barack Obama and a couple of elite Democrats got in a smoke-filled room and decided to throw Joe Biden overboard. That is not how it works. That is a threat to democracy. Donald Trump went through constitutional means to contest an election that should have been contested. It was unprecedented to have that many write-in ballots. Unprecedented to lose 18 out of the 19 bellwether counties and win. Countless irregularities, statistical and machine abnormalities, reports of ineligible voters and unlawful activity, the list goes on. And even if you want to make the argument that what Trump did was an attempt to overthrow the government, Joe Biden still took office peacefully. There was no military coup. When Hitler led an insurrection in 1923, the Nazis surrounded the Munich Beer Hall with weapons and took hostages. Although it turned out to be a failed insurrection attempt, it was a clear plan to overthrow the Bavarian government. Our constitution is set up to ensure that dictators cannot take power. So even if Donald Trump wants to usurp the authority of the United States government for his own permanently, there's a military that upholds the constitution. There is a war of narratives. Psyches have been weaponized so that we turn on each other to help those in the interest of maintaining power. None of us, not the president, not those hypothetical guys in the smoky rooms putting agendas together, none of them fully know what's going on, but we can speak about the unfolding of recent history with certainty. Welcome to Nazi Germany. Welcome. Show your papers for the great concert. So tell me about what the event is today. Well, we're protesting the fact that we cannot enter this homecoming back to New York concert unless you show proof that you're vaccinated. Back then, the Jews had to go through checkpoints and they had to show whether they were an essential worker or be given permission to move further. That's what we're doing. They need to show their papers in order to enter a concert. They need to show papers in order to go to a restaurant, even to do classes in university, even to keep their jobs, and people are complying. Papers, please enjoy the show. Your digital passport. Those are your papers. The digital passport or the vaccine passport in New York was called the Excelsior Pass. The company behind this new technology is the same company behind the punch card technology used to track and trace the Jews in Nazi Germany. So eventually there will be sort of this digital uh, immunity proof that will help facilitate the global reopening up. Even between the states, when the states were free and they moved to another state, they had to show papers showing that they were free states. Otherwise, they would have gotten captured back. These people have no idea about anything related to history whatsoever. Even the free states had to show papers. Can I see your papers? We can pretend now that the conservative argument was just compulsory vaccines are bad because they infringe on my freedom. That wasn't the conservative argument. The conservative argument was that mass deaths were gonna happen, mass side effects were gonna happen. Why do you make the excess deaths? There are, that for related to vaccines, there are almost none. This, the mRNA vaccines have been administered excess, to- Excess for deaths Related in to Europe. vaccines, absolutely. We don't, no, no, no. Excess deaths in Europe are up about 20%. No, are, no. are you implying that you think it's because of vaccines? I'm or? not implying anything. I'm well, saying what the excess deaths are. In injecting billions of people 
with a vaccine that was not tested by any stretch of the imagination with the thoroughness that it should have before it was forced upon people also might be a contributing factor. Partly we, because we know that it led to a rise in myocarditis among young men. And we also know that there was absolutely no reason whatsoever to ever recommend that that vaccine was delivered to young children. The leftists should have been the ones that were most skeptical about the bloody pharmaceutical companies. And they jumped on the vaccine bandwagon in exactly the same way that you're doing right pharmaceutical now. Pharmaceutical companies have helped us tremendously. Yeah, throughout the right, there we go, fine. No, you think I don't think hasn't? so. No, I don't think that so. You're just wrong. I think they're you're utterly wrong. Icy. So you don't think that the pharmaceutical companies who dominate the advertising landscape with 75% of the funding are corrupt. I don't, corrupt is a corrupt. very broad. No, 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 no it's do you think that? Do you think that pharmacy, corrupt you think with they, a tinge of malevolence, you think willing that, to extract money out of people by putting their health on the line? What do you, you make of the fact? What do you think the mRNA vaccine, the speeding up of it, came from? How do you make for the fact that it was Donald Trump that did Terror. warp speed? Terror. We're, we're all feeling the pressures of living through unprecedented times. The collective falling into hysteria, projecting deep-seated fears onto leaders who will make them victim to falling into sound bites. Hitler being the most obvious one to reach for. When people bring up Hitler, let's talk about Hitler's right-hand man, uh, Joseph Goebbels. And Joseph Goebbels actually had a propaganda te uh, technique called accusation in the mirror. It's when you accuse your enemy of doing exactly what you're doing to pull a mask to support you. After 80 years of presidents who despise Nazism, Donald Trump became the first one to praise it. They're poisoning the blood of our country. It's sick. It's wrong. And the Republican Party is defending it. And if you're a Republican voter, it's time to ask yourself, is this who you are? Because if you're still defending Donald Trump, the answer is yes. Goebbels served as the chief propagandist for the Nazi party. He led the Ministry of Propaganda from 1933 to 1945 and brainwashed millions of normal German people to become faithful Nazis. Germany was going through tremendous financial depression after the First World War and the Nazi party promised they would fix the country. Hitler gave Goebbels the task of censoring any media conflicting with Nazi ideals, but Goebbels would take it a step further. He would order the book burnings of not only the authors and thinkers not in line with the Nazi party rhetoric, but also of the thinkers he was personally jealous of. Given the taste of control, he absolutely loved it, and clearly the compulsion isn't rare. Fräulein, papers please, Fräulein. Well, why can't we be here? Because I'm here, this is my post, I'm doing beta my you have to wear a mask the whole duration of the trip. No. Yeah, no. no. We all we I disagree with the mask. Too. I don't want to be too close to you. You don't have a mask on, I have a mask. Everybody got on a mask. Get off the train. Like you have to put it on now, otherwise we're gonna get police officer. Okay, get the police officer, okay, please. No Thank problem. you. Alright, guys, stand up for me. You're gonna be under arrest. Okay? You're gonna be arrested too. Hey, you're, freedom. Freedom. you're a tyrant. Why did you force the job? When people fear for their lives, they will do as they're told. And as they are being controlled, they will see themselves in the people that they are accusing. The ones who locked people in their house, who mandated medical experiments, who coerced us into accepting the most corrupt organizations in the history of the planet, Pfizer, Moderna, Johnson & Johnson, as saviors of Western civilization. Pfizer lost the biggest criminal lawsuit in history. That puts them up there with Enron. Johnson & Johnson lost a six and a half billion dollar lawsuit. The federal government created a vaccination trust fund in 1986 that has paid over $4.6 billion to compensate those injured by vaccines in the United States alone, with less than 1% of claims even getting reported. But the fund also works as a liability shield for the vaccine vaccine manufacturers and those who are injured. 
effectively having to sue the government to receive compensation. The COVID vaccine comparison, on the other hand, operates totally differently. Not only can one not sue the manufacturing company, you can't sue the government either. You must file a claim for compensation, and the standard of proof is far higher than the normal vaccine compensation program. As a result, very little payout is happening. This is by definition the most corrupt misuse of power in history, because it's the first time that corruption has been globalized. And ironically, those calling Trump Hitler and his supporters Nazis are the same ones that complied with the rollout of this experimental vaccine. A vaccine that violated all 10 of the Nuremberg Codes, a set of ethical principles explicitly emphasizing from the outset that voluntary consent without force, fraud, deceit, duress, overreaching, or other ulterior form of constraint or coercion is essential. There are a number of people, for one reason or other, who just do not want to comply and get vaccinated. We've got to get them vaccinated. And hopefully they will do it willingly. You were super duper today, getting your COVID vaccine, Elmo. Yeah, there was a little pinch, but that was okay. Free fries when you get vaccinated? Mmm. Vaccination. A Vienna brothel is providing COVID-19 vaccinations and giving those who take up the offer a 30-minute session with a, quote, lady of their choice. If not, there will have to be things that will essentially put pressure on them. And I believe that once we start doing that, you will see more and more people willingly get vaccinated. The Facebook founder bowed to pressure from the Biden administration to censor content. The only pandemic we have is among the unvaccinated. Zuckerberg saying, I believe the government pressure was wrong, and I regret that we were not more outspoken about it. Unfortunately, I think a lot of the kind of establishment on that um, you know, kind of waffled on a bunch of facts and you know asked for a bunch of things to be censored that in retrospect ended up being you know, more debatable or, or true. It is the unvaccinated who are the problem, period, end of story. The only people that you can blame, the only people you can blame, this isn't shaming, this is the truth, maybe they should be shamed, but the unvaccinated. Anyone you came into contact with will blame you as will the rest of us who have done the right thing by getting vaccinated. Because frankly, we know that we can't trust the unvaccinated. I think it's time to get our moral house in order, Anderson. It's the unvaccinated who are the threat. If you didn't get the coronavirus vaccine, you're now out of a job after a COVID-19 vaccination mandate recently went into effect. I was just forced out of my job. The job that I love, the job that I poured my heart and soul into was being threatened. I don't know what kind of pandemic it is. They're firing nurses who are willing to work. Myself and thousands of other brave men and women are being forced to either comply with the mandate or face termination for standing in their beliefs. When are we going to stop putting up with the idiots in this country and just say it's mandatory to get vaccinated? F*** them. F*** their freedom. I want my freedom to live. If someone chooses not to be vaccinated, that they should choose to stay home not go to work, not have a job. Shut up, be respectful of other people, and get a vaccine. And it's been proven that when you make it difficult for people in their lives, they lose their ideological bullshit. After World War II, the world wanted to understand how it was that a population could turn into literal Nazis. Stanley Milgram, a Jewish psychologist inspired by the trial of Adolf Eichmann, performed a series of social experiments which sent shockwaves in the medical community. The experiment devised to explain the psychology of genocide by measuring the willingness of a participant to obey an authority figure when instructed to perform acts that conflict with their conscience. Participants were led to believe that they were assisting an unrelated experiment in which they had to administer electric shocks to a learner. They gradually agreed to increase the levels of shock. Absolutely fatal if real. What they found was 65% of the population population would be willing to kill a person if a doctor told them to do so. At the time, it was assumed that only 1-3% to of the population would comply with what medical and psychological professionals saw as signs of serious psychopathology. And you don't think that information won't be weaponized by the very people who wage wars?
wars and rape and pillage the globe of its own resources to incite their own power. People do not want to read history from the perspective of the villain. You got a checkpoint. Checkpoints, checkpoints. Show your papers. Medical you show your papers. The You're medical part Show your papers. Wow. And you have enough to do That's not <laughs> the people. That was Germany. Have fun with the ICU. You. That's no, no, disgusting. No, 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 you point at me? You point at me. You have a Semitic piece of if you stayed in your house and called people breathing fresh air murderers, the burden is on you to prove that you are not part of the 65% that we warned about was present after the Nazis were revealed. The only reason that we as a civilization are so disposed against the Nazis is because America won the war. If Hitler won, Americans would have been labeled the Nazis. And you would have said that the extermination of 6 million Jews was a necessary evil because that's what the history books would have taught you. The country is divided, and as America wars between deciding whether the Democrats or the Republicans are the bigger threat, we all have an intuition that the world has fallen asleep. How do we awaken what is deep within the subconscious mind? We all have been screaming, the Nazis are coming, the Nazis are coming. They are here. As we knock on the doors of a third world war, we are all faced to confront the consequence of a dying world. A world that will look very differently from the one that we know now. The question is, will the bedrocks of individual freedom reign supreme? Will technology serve humanity or will we be slaves to AI? What principles from the world that we grew up in will we carry into the new world? That is the only question that we're actually fighting for. So Donald Trump was recently shot at one of his rallies. How do you feel about that? I wish he would have gotten shot in the forehead. So you want Trump to get shot? I do. I hate to say that because I don't have hatred in my soul. Three supporters were shot. One of them did not survive. He died jumping onto his loved ones to protect them from the gunfire. F*** it. F*** the dude. Um, the firefighter guy. Uh, f*** Trump. F*** the people that support him. I just want you to know, okay? Just in case you're confused or it seems like I'm... Uh, you don't, whatever. If one of you were in the crowd and you're a conservative fan of mine and you end up, you know, getting blown away or whatever the fuck, I'm making fun of you the next day on Twitter. I've got to say, I just found that repulsive. You are somebody who seems almost gleeful that a young firefighter with a family, with a wife and children, who he was protecting as he was shot dead, that he deserved what was coming to him because he went to a President Trump rally. You sound almost gleeful, Destin, and I'm sorry, that makes you frankly despicable. I'm asking you to condemn what happened as an egregious attack on, a do on democracy. Can you do that? No, I won't. What percentage of this event happening was due to Donald Trump's rhetoric? What do they think the answer to that question is? What percentage could it be that, that the other side has spent eight years calling Donald Trump the new Adolf Hitler, a person who was responsible for the murder of 12 million people, including 6 million Jewish people in a Holocaust? Last time I checked, Donald Trump hasn't murdered 12 million people. You don't actually have anything inside you that you want the other side to have. And then you yourself actually are exactly the, the person that you're describing. Do you condemn the shooter shooting Donald Trump? No.
Those steadfast in their hate do not know how to not project in those moments. In an era increasingly shaped by technological manipulation, it will be those who discern the essence of tyranny and know how not to project their own personal biases they will go on to ultimately shape the zeitgeist. It only takes a small number of people willing to take a stand to alter the currents of history. Humanity is depending on everybody who has a position from which to see what is taking place, to grapple with what it might mean. If we're to have a chance of delivering a planet to our children and our grandchildren that is worthy of them, we have to speak up. We greatly outnumber those we are pitted against. Goliath made a terrible mistake, and it made it most egregiously during COVID. It took all of the competent people, took all of the courageous people, and it shoved them out of the institutions. And it created, in so doing, the dream team. Let's stop the regime change war world's police policies. Put the interests of the American people first. I want to get on the inside of FDA to make America healthy again. I have discussed with Trump the idea of a government efficiency commission. If you want to stay out of World War III in this country, vote Trump. If you want to revive our national identity in this country, vote Trump. If you want to make America great again, vote Trump. AI and technology will largely be responsible for government authority. The question is, will spirit reign supreme? Will technology serve humanity or will we be slaves to technology? Which principles will we push forward into this new era may very well be the only question that we're truly fighting over.